Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. From time to time, I get people telling me that I need to start manufacturing a squirrel gun, you know, a small bore muzzle loading rifle, such as could be used to hunt squirrels and rabbits and other small game, as opposed to the 50 caliber muzzle loaders that we would use for hunting larger game. And the reasoning that they give is that nobody else really makes one. Uh, most muzzleloader manufacturers only make the 50 caliber and sometimes larger caliber guns, uh, so there's not many options on the market for a small bore muzzleloading rifle. Now maybe one of these days I will get around to making a few squirrel rifles, but I think there's a good reason that most muzzleloader manufacturers don't produce small bore, small game rifles. Uh, specifically, if you're looking for a non-firearm, something that shoots like a gun but isn't regulated as an actual firearm for legal purposes, uh, for hunting small game, you know, squirrel-sized animals or maybe even game up to the size of a small cottontail, air guns fulfill that role really well. You know, there's a lot of air guns on the market, many of them are relatively inexpensive, uh, and that would be pretty difficult to compete with in a muzzle-loading small game rifle. At the same time, I can also understand the perspective of someone who wants to hunt squirrels with a muzzleloader just because hunting with a muzzleloader is fun, and depending on what state you're in, deer season generally only comes once a year, whereas you may be able to hunt squirrels year-round. And so it occurred to me that maybe a more expedient solution would just be to develop a squirrel load for a 50 caliber muzzleloader. But this is not a trivial problem because the lightest load that you would typically fire from a 50 caliber muzzleloader would be a patched round ball with a modest powder charge, and that's still going to be giving you something like a 180 grain projectile moving at transonic velocities. So we're still talking ballistics on the same order of magnitude with like a 357 Magnum, which is going to pretty well blow a squirrel to pieces. So today, I want to experiment with an ultra-light load for my 50 caliber muzzle loader here. Specifically, I made some plastic sabots that hold a single pellet of number four buckshot. That's basically a 25 caliber round ball. Uh, by itself, it weighs about 25 grains, and then the plastic sabot adds almost another 20 grains. Uh, so our total projection projectile weight is like 40 to 45 grains, kind of in the same neighborhood with a 22 bullet, and then the sabot will most likely be discarded when it leaves the, the barrel anyway. And I think I'll start with a powder charge of like 20 to 30 grains of black powder. Now, I'm not really sure if that's going to give me good ignition in a 50 caliber muzzleloader, so I also printed some plastic spacers just to take up some additional space in the chamber and hopefully uh, provide more reliable ignition if we need it. We'll try it both ways here. Okay, so I fired five shots, uh, about a 25 grain powder charge, and I was using the spacers on this round. Uh, the recoil felt about right. It was about what I was expecting. It was very light, not much more than a 22 rim fire, so it seemed appropriate for a squirrel load. Uh, however, if we look at the target here, I'm seeing one, two, three, four large holes in the target, plus one small one, and then a couple of random dents. Uh, these dents, I'm sure, are from either the spacers or possibly pieces of the sabot uh, that came off and impacted the target. Uh, but it looks like we're not getting consistent separation of the pellet from the sabot. You know, it worked once, and that's where we got that one small hole, uh, but then the other four shots... 
the pellet stayed inside the sabot. It acted as a non-discarding sabot all the way to the target and actually retained enough energy for the whole plastic sabot to punch right through half-inch wafer board. In and of itself, that may not necessarily be a problem, but the problem is that it's not consistent and probably related to the consistency is the fact that it's not very accurate. Uh, I'm shooting at 25 yards and we've got I, like a seven or eight inch group here, which uh, is considerably larger than the vital area of a squirrel. So let's try it without the spacers and just see what happens. Okay, breeze just came up, so sorry about the wind noise. Hopefully you can still hear me. Anyway, uh, for these five shots, I got rid of the spacer and I increased my powder charge to 30 grains. And that really tightened up our group. Uh, we went from, you know, like an eight inch group down to about a two and a half, three inch group at 25 yards. Interestingly though, we still have four new large holes where the sabot remained intact and punched right through the target, and then one small hole where the sabot released the pellet and it continued down to the target. Okay, hopefully I've got the camera sheltered a little bit better now. Uh, anyway, I realize that a three inch group at 25 yards may not be superlative accuracy, but I think it would be acceptable. Squirrel hunting, in my experience, tends to take place at fairly close range, so uh, if there'd been a squirrel at the centroid of that group, I think at least four out of those five shots would have been kill shots. So, And so then the question is, well, if the target had been a squirrel, what would the shot have done to it? Uh, so I think to answer that question, or at least get an idea of what the damage might have been, first I want to see if we can get a chronograph reading, and then let's try shooting a couple of different targets and comparing the damage to what we might expect from something like a 22 rimfire. 1127. 1160. That was 1210. Okay, I'm getting velocities ranging from about 1130 to about 1200 feet per second. Uh, so our projectile weight is pretty comparable to a 22 rimfire. Our bullet velocity is pretty comparable to a 22 rimfire. I would expect terminal performance roughly comparable to a 22 rimfire. But let's set up a few targets and see if we learn anything else. Let's start with an aluminum beverage can, which I have refilled with water. Well, I didn't quite hit it in the center, I'm kind of off to the side there, but given the shot placement, I think that's pretty comparable damage to what a 22 rimfire would have done. Now let's try shooting a larger bottle of water. Okay, so as you saw, I shot the thing twice, uh, first up here and then down here. And in both cases, looks like about the same thing happened. The plastic sabot hit the jug and shattered. You can see pieces of shattered plastic sabot in the bottom of the jug there. Uh, and then the lead pellet continued on through and we have two very small exit wounds there and there. And finally, let's try shooting a stack of wood blocks so that we can measure the penetration. Okay, let's see what we got here. You can see the back of the sabot is about flush with the surface of the wood. So the plastic sabot uh, clearly remained connected to the pellet and embedded itself in the wood there.
Meanwhile, we do not have an exit wound, so clearly the pellet is still somewhere inside there. There was a little bit of a bulge on the back, a little bit of splintering. So I'm just kind of prying these splinters out. Let's see if we can see how far the pellet came in. Okay. All right. And there's the pellet, just still uh, about an eighth of an inch shy of the back of the first two by four. Uh, so just a little less than an inch and a half of penetration through solid pine. Well, based on what we've seen, I think this is a viable solution to small game hunting with a 50 caliber muzzleloader. Uh, it may not be ideal, I mean certainly the accuracy could be better, and I'm not really sure exactly what the terminal performance on a small game animal would be. I could definitely see the possibility of that plastic sabot shattering on impact and causing some extraneous meat damage around the wound, uh, you know, unlike uh, a solid lead ball would. Uh, but overall, this seems to be comparable to or just a little less powerful than a 22 rimfire. So, for hunting game the size of squirrels and cottontails, I would think it would be perfectly serviceable. And I will put the STL file for the plastic sabot up on my website in case anyone else wants to experiment with this concept. Uh, so, until next time, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.